Let's make a graph Let's make it look cool Thank goodness StatQuest is here Cause StatQuest rules StatQuest Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest Today we're going to talk about drawing ROC graphs and calculating the AUC in R. If you're interested in doing this at home, there's a link to the example code in the description below. In this stat quest, we'll draw a simple ROC graph, extract thresholds for a specific region in the ROC, draw and compute a partial area under the curve, and end by layering two ROC graphs so that they can be easily compared. Note, this stat quest builds on the example used in the ROC and AUC stat quest, so you might want to watch the first few minutes of that one if you haven't already. The first thing we need to do is load in PROC, the library that will draw ROC graphs for us. If you don't have PROC installed, just use install.packages PROC to install it. We're also going to use the random forest package as part of the example. For the purposes of this stat quest, you just need to know that a random forest is a way to classify samples, and we can change the threshold that we use to make those decisions. However, if you want more details, check out the quests. If you don't have Random Forest installed, just use install.packages random forest to install it. Since we are going to generate an example dataset, let's set the seed for the random number generator so that we can reproduce our results. Note, I usually set the random number seed to 42, but 420 made a nicer looking set of random data. This example dataset will be just like the one we used in the ROC and AOC stat quest, only this one will have 100 samples instead of just 8. So let's start by setting num.samples to 100. Now we'll create 100 measurements and store them in a variable called weight. We do this by using the rnorm function to generate 100 random values from a normal distribution with the mean set to 172 and the standard deviation set to 29. Psst, just in case you're interested, the internet told me that the average man weighs 172 pounds with a standard deviation of 29. And then we use the sort function to sort the numbers from low to high. This next line of code classifies an individual as obese or not obese. The way we are going to classify a sample as obese is to start by using the rank function to rank the weights from lightest to heaviest. The lightest sample will have rank equals 1, and the heaviest sample will have rank equals 100. Then we scale the ranks by 100. This means that the lightest sample will equal 1 divided by 100, which equals 0 0.01, and the heaviest sample will equal 100 divided by 100, which equals 1. Then we compare the scaled ranks to random numbers between 0 and 1. And if the random number is smaller than the scaled rank, then the individual is classified as obese. Otherwise, it is classified as not obese. The if smaller than obese, otherwise not obese, is performed by the if else function, and the results are stored in a variable called obese. To see what that fancy line of code just did, we can print out the contents of obese. The zeros stand for not obese, and the ones stand for obese. The lighter samples are mostly zeros, not obese and the heavier samples are mostly ones, obese. Now let's plot the data to see what it looks like. Bam! These samples are obese, and these samples are not obese. Now we will use the GLM function to fit a logistic regression curve to the data. If you want to learn more about how the GLM function works, there's a stat quest that can fill you in on the details. 
Otherwise, just know that we can store the results of the glm function in a variable called glm.fit. And pass weight and the fitted dot values stored in glm.fit into the lines function. To draw a curve that tells us the predicted probability that an individual is obese or not obese. glm.fit dollar sign fitted dot values contains the y-axis coordinates along the curve for each sample. In other words, glm.fit dollar sign fitted dot values contains estimated probabilities that each sample is obese. We will use the known classifications and the estimated probabilities to draw an ROC curve. We use the ROC function from the PROC library to draw the ROC graph. We pass in the known classifications, obese or not obese, for each sample and the estimated probabilities that each sample is obese. And we tell the ROC function to draw the graph, not just calculate all of the numbers used to draw the graph. When you use the ROC function, it prints out a bunch of stuff. The first part just echoes what you typed in and isn't very interesting. The second part is a little more interesting. It tells us how many samples were not obese. Remember, not obese equals zero. And how many samples were obese? Obese equals one. The third part is the most interesting of all. It tells us the area under the curve, or the AUC. Ta-da! Here's the graph. Here's the ROC curve. And here's the diagonal line that shows where the true positive rate is the same as the false positive rate. But if you draw this graph in RStudio, then you'll also get this ugly padding on each side. To get rid of the ugly padding, we have to use the par function and muck around with the graphics parameters. In this case, we set PTY, aka the plot type, to S, which is short for square. Then we use the up arrow key to bring back the call to the ROC function and we get a much nicer ROC graph. By default, the ROC function plots specificity on the x-axis instead of 1 minus specificity. As a result, the x-axis goes from 1 on the left side to 0 on the right side. If using a backwards x-axis gives you a headache, don't freak out. Instead, set legacy.axes to true, and the ROC function will use 1 minus specificity on the x-axis, and all will be right in the world again. Now that we're on the subject of changing the axes, I have a confession to make. I have a very hard time remembering what sensitivity and specificity mean. So I set percent to true so that the axes are in percentages rather than values between 0 and 1, and I label the x-axis false positive percentage and label the y-axis true positive percentage. Bam! Now we have a nice looking x-axis and a nice looking y-axis. We can also change the color of the ROC curve and make it thicker. You can change the color to anything you want by setting the call parameter. I set it to RGB values that I found on the Color Brewer website. And you can change the line thickness to whatever you want by setting the LWD parameter. Now, imagine we're interested in the range of thresholds that resulted in this part of the ROC curve. We can access those thresholds by saving the calculations that the ROC function does in a variable and then make a data frame that contains all of the true positive percentages by multiplying the sensitivities by 100 and the false positive percentages by multiplying 1 minus specificities by 100 and last but not least, the thresholds. We can then use the head function to look at the first six rows of the new data frame. And we see that when the threshold is set to negative infinity so that every single sample is called obese, 
then the TPP, the true positive percentage, is 100 because all of the OB samples were correctly classified. And the FPP, the false positive percentage, is also 100 because all of the samples that were not obese were incorrectly classified. So the first row in ROC.DF corresponds to the upper right-hand corner of the ROC curve. We can use the tail function to look at the last six rows of the data frame. And we see that when the threshold is set to positive infinity, so that every single sample is classified not obese, then the TPP and FPP are both zero because none of the samples were classified either correctly or incorrectly obese. So the last row in ROC.DF corresponds to the bottom left-hand corner of the ROC curve. Now we can isolate the TPP, the FPP, and the thresholds used when the true positive rate is between 60 and 80. If we were interested in choosing a threshold in this range, we could pick one that had the optimal balance of true positives and false positives. Now let's go back to talking about customizing what the ROC function draws. If we want to print the AUC directly on the graph, then we set the print.AUC parameter to true. You can also draw and calculate a partial area under the curve. These are useful when you want to focus on the part of the ROC curve that only allows for a small number of false positives. To print and draw the partial AUC, we start by setting the print.AUC parameter to true. We then specify where along the x-axis you want the AUC to be printed, otherwise the text might overlap something important. Note, I settled on 45 after trying a bunch of different locations. Then we set partial.AUC to the range of specificity values that we want to focus on. Note, the range of values is in terms of specificity, not 1 minus specificity. So 100% specificity corresponds to 0% on our 1 minus specificity axis. And 90% specificity corresponds to 10% on our 1 minus specificity axis. Then we draw the partial area under the curve by setting auc.polygon to true. And we set auc.polygon.call to specify the polygon's color. Note, I use the same RGB numbers that I used to make the line blue. However, I added two digits to the end to make the color semi-transparent. BAM! For those of you keeping track, we're up to three exclamation points on the BAM. Lastly, let's talk about how to overlap two ROC curves so that they are easy to compare. We'll start by making a random forest classifier with the same data set. Now we draw the original ROC curve for the logistic regression. Then we add the ROC curve for the random forest. We do this with the plot.roc function. Almost everything in the call to plot.roc is the same as in the call to the roc function. However, since we are using a random forest for the second roc, we pass in the number of trees in the forest that voted correctly. We also set the color to green instead of blue. Again, I got these RGB values from the Color Brewer website. We also set add to true, so that this ROC curve is added to an existing graph. And we set print.auc.y to 40, so that the AUC for the random forest is printed below the AUC for the logistic regression. Lastly, we draw a legend in the bottom right-hand corner. BAM! Once we're all done drawing ROC graphs, we need to reset the PTY graphical parameter back to its default value, M, which is short for maximum, as in, use the maximum amount of space provided to draw graphs. Hooray! 
we've made it to the end of another exciting stack quest. If you like this stack quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stack quest, well, consider getting a t-shirt or a hoodie or buying one or two of my original songs. The links to do that are all below. Alright, until next time, quest on!